Be sure to subscribe and click on the bell for notifications on future uploads. Hello everyone, Simon Bard here, or oh, you can call me Silly. And yes, I'm still continuing DC Month, as the last two movies I'll be looking at came out during my favorite year for movies, 2017. And since the sequel had came out on Christmas 2020, I'll be looking at the first film that came out in the summer of 2017 that has also been highly praised from both critics and audiences. Wonder Woman. The movie is based on the character, Wonder Woman, created by William Moulton Marsden, who is also the inventor of the lie detector, which is how the superheroine's lasso of truth came into being. On the island of Thermoscira, hidden away from the outside world, lived the tribe of women called the Amazons, and no men ever lived there, as they're protected by Zeus, who also created them and their island. But one girl, named Diana, was molded from clay and brought to life by Zeus, yet is kept from training to be an Amazon warrior, as her mother, Hippolyta, the queen of the Amazons, fears that she'll be in danger if she trains. But after some convincing from Diana's trainer, Atope, Hippolyta allows Diana to be trained more than any Amazon, and as years pass, Diana is trained in being a warrior, until she discovers to have powers she didn't know. She soon sees a plane crash in the ocean, and dives in to rescue a pilot named Captain Stephen Trevor, a World War I American working for British intelligence as a spy, who discovered that the Germans are creating gas bombs that will penetrate gas masks. And all of this is secretly led by General Eric Ludendorff, and created by his chemist associate named Dr. Isabel Morrow, also known as Dr. Poison. Once Steve tells the Amazons this, via Lasso of Hestia, or the Lasso of Truth, Diana suspects that Ares, the god of war and Zeus's brother, is behind the war and causes it to happen and wants to go with Steve back to where he came from. But Hippolyta refuses, so Diana decides to go with Steve herself, taking with her some armor, a shield, and a sword that's known as the God Killer. And as Hippolyta sees what her daughter's doing, she allows her to go, despite that she might not return. So. As Diana and Steve head to London and prepare to go to war in Germany, the two even share a connection with each other, as Diana learns about things she didn't know, as well as make new friends too, along with learning the casualties of war, in which she goes to confront on her own when others don't, giving inspiration to British soldiers to fight back. Now, with the films in the DCEU prior to Wonder Woman getting mainly negative to mixed reception, it seems odd for a film between Suicide Squad and Justice League to get this big of a positive reception when the former and latter are mainly mixed to negative reception. But for Wonder Woman, at least to me, it's a fairly serviceable film. In a good way? Almost, but it's there. It is a straightforward narrative and gets to the points rather well, so let me just get the good elements out of the way first. It's partly a fish-out-of-water story that isn't awkward and has bits of fun charm to it. The romance is much the same thing, and all they say isn't too obvious and they don't necessarily spell out or call out what's right or wrong. There's many slow-motion scenes during the action, and they look pretty good. Even though Zack Snyder only produced this and not directed it, it has the same feel if he did direct it. There's bits of cleverness at times, like when Wonder Woman fights Ludendorff, who she believes is Ares given his physical strength, when really it's a chemical from Dr. Maru that makes him as strong as Wonder Woman. And while the comics first took place in World War II, this movie's set in World War I, and presents it in a gritty and downbeat manner, as it did. Not too bloody by the way, but harsh enough. The sets and costumes look well, most of the effects are good, and some of the humor is okay, giving me a chuckle here and there. Then there's the stuff that doesn't work, which aren't bad, but they're very weak. While I do like the effects, there are a couple that look a little fake, even in close-up and slow motion. I do find the characters to be okay, but some like the men Steve round up to help him and Diana in war could have been more fleshed out, and more time is spent with them. They have their motives, history, and persona kind of down, but I would have liked a bit more to them, as I was getting to like them. There are brief moments where Diana doesn't believe Steve and thinks Ares corrupted him, which seems unneeded, despite how quick they are. 
but the climax of it all is one I couldn't quite get. It's when Sir Patrick Morgan, who is the Speaker of Peace of British Intelligence in London, reveals himself to be Ares, the God of War. I mean, with him in disguise, it makes sense how normal he looks in the time period, as opposed to Diana, and I do buy him to be the God of War, though more in a younger state. But what I don't buy is two things. One, his motivation. Ares is more the God of Truth, even though Diana's told that after Zeus created men, Ares turned men against each other by filling their hearts with jealousy and hatred when all he really did is give inspiration to men to have them create weapons to kill each other. And to me, it's kind of confusing. So if man was already filled with hatred, wouldn't they also get ideas of their own without inspiration from a god? I don't seem to quite get this. At one point, Ares tells Diana that she's the god killer and not the sword, which makes sense, as she's brought to life by Zeus, meaning she also has the powers of a god. But since that is true, then what's the sword for? What was it originally used against? And second, when Ares fights Diana and gets his armor attached, there are a few shots where his face is shown under his mask, and it looks fake half the time. Occasionally he would appear creepy, though there are times when he would seem silly when madly shouting. Plus, when Ares gets destroyed, it almost led me to believe, at first, that it ended the war, but there was a peace negotiation between the British and Germans that would have been happening simultaneously. Though I do have to ask, with all that's been revealed in the third act and climax, was it really necessary to include Ares into the mix, even when Diana learns how humanity works and what she's been told? Because from my perspective, Ares' addition just complicates matters more, whether it's from the comics or not. But overall, it's a fine film, even if I find it complex as it goes on to the end. And the actors who played the characters did a decent enough job. I already mentioned Gal Gadot as Wonder Woman and Diana Prince in Batman v Superman, so here's the new cast list. Chris Pine plays Captain Steve Trevor. Robin Wright plays Antope. Connie Nielsen plays Sopalta. Lucy Davis plays Etta Davis. David Thewis plays Sir Patrick Morgan slash Ares. Ewan Bremer plays Charlie. Sekamawi plays Amir. Danny Hudson plays Eric Ludendorff. Anna Anya plays Dr. Isabel Morrow. Eugene Braverock plays Chief. Emily Carey plays Diana Prince at age 12. And Lily Aspel plays Diana Prince at age 8. As a whole, this movie is alright. The characters are fine, the story is okay, and the effects are decent enough. Director Patty Jenkins had made a movie on Wonder Woman that, while I don't think it's as good as everyone says it is, is close enough at telling a basic story and giving character motives and moments without spelling everything out. But the nitpicks I have of it and the few issues involving Ares and a couple of character developments tend to keep me from wanting to enjoy the whole film, and if they were tweaked a bit more, I would be satisfied. Yet, as is, it's almost decent and a serviceable one too. And Wonder Woman 1984 is likely the same, though in more ways than one. But that's another time. So today... This movie will be getting a rating of... Two and a half plus stars. So thank you for joining me. Like, comment, subscribe. Follow me on Facebook or Twitter. Support me on Patreon. And until next time, for the conclusion of DC Month. Where I'll be taking a look at my favorite movie in the DCEU, and you would be surprised by it. <laughs>